I have been having diarrhea for six hours now. It feels like someone left coal in my pink stocking, if you know what I'm saying. Ho ho ho, my fellow believers in Christopher Kringle, another holiday season is upon us. And as is tradition, we're all gathered around our giant LED screens to watch some films that get us in the Christmas spirit. Let me guess, you've probably watched Elf, Home Alone, The Grinch, A Christmas Story, Christmas Vacation, Bad Santa, if you're cool, and the same films over and over again, year after year. Is it just me, or is it all getting kind of boring? The same movies over and over again. If I have to see Kevin McAllister slap his face again, I'm gonna make this scream look like a beautiful angel song. I'm over all these movies, man. I need something new. And I've been scratching around the bottom of the barrel looking for something refreshing. But I think I did find a little golden nugget in a sea of dog turds. The Munsters, Scary Little Christmas. Now I've always had a soft spot for the Munsters ever since I was just a little kid and my grandpa gave me season one of the original Munsters on DVD for my birthday. Which I don't know why. It's like he was walking through Cracker Barrel on the day of my birthday and thought, oh, my little Johnny would love this. No, Grandpa, I want Grand Theft Auto 4. Now, I gotta be honest with you, even though I have a soft spot for the Munsters, I didn't have high hopes going into this film. I mean, this thing came out 30 years after the original show. That's a little late to the party if you ask me. So with this being 30 years after the original, obviously the cast isn't going to be the same. I mean, they could have used the original cast. You would have saved money on makeup. Just having a bunch of living dead zombies walking around, you know, because they're old. <laughs> well, now they're dead, but this was 1998? 7? 9? So with this film, we get a new cast, starting with Herman Munster, the patriarch of the Munster family, played by Samuel McMurray, who was the first guest star on The Simpsons. Little fun fact. He also starred in and co-produced a film called Slappy and the Stinkers in 1998, which had a budget of $8 million and brought in a whopping $80,837. Holy shit, how is that even possible? Playing the sexy Mrs. Lily Munster is Anne Magnuson, who is most known as playing Lydia in Panic Room. Decent movie, you should check it out if you haven't. She was also a founding member of the 80s psychedelic rock band Bongwater. Uh, let's go ahead and give that a listen. This song is titled The Power of pussy. The youngest member of the Munster family, Eddie, was played by Bug Hall. You may know Bug as playing Alfalfa in the 1994 Little Rascals film. In 2013, Hall left Hollywood and converted to Catholicism. How sweet! Well, I'm hoping he's having a good life, man. You know, it's not easy to do those kinds of th- Oh, wait a minute. He was arrested in June 2020 for inhaling air duster. I'm sure those two things are totally unrelated. The daughter Marilyn Munster was played by Elaine Hendricks, who was in the 1998 Parent Trap remake, and she played the female Gadget in Inspector Gadget 2. She also played the character of Ass in Charlie's Bitch Ass Hose. What was what? And this whole thing was written by a man named Ed Ferrara. Now, that may not mean much to you, but as a pro wrestling fan, when I saw his name on the screen, I nearly jumped out of my seat. Because this guy was a writer for the WWF and the WCW during the biggest boom period in pro wrestling history. But to me, he's most known as the asshole who mocked legendary commentator Jim Ross's Bell's Palsy. So, f*** this guy. Now, right off the bat, just about everyone does pretty decent in their parts. I know these are big shoes to fill. <laughs> Get it? Frankenstein, big... Herman Monster, stop haunting my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> But everyone does fairly well, except for Grandpa. For some reason, I can't get Mike Myers' cat in the hat out of my head. Just watch some of this stuff. And I'll be poked with a pitchfork before I let him down. Don't knock a little pitchfork poking until you've tried it. Yeah. Also, I think they went a little too dark on his makeup here. Like, it wasn't like that in the original show. What's going on here, Gramps? I know you're 800 years old, but times have changed, geezer. We don't do that anymore. Yeah. Now, the plot is pretty simple. Young Eddie here is just not in the Christmas spirit, and the family comes together to cheer him up. We all caught up? We're all caught up. 
that's basically it. I mean, it's a 1990s Christmas special. If you want complicated, then you need to get to the 2000s Christmas specials. On the way to school, Eddie is confronted by the most cheesy 90s group of bullies that I've ever seen. I mean, it would have been way more believable if these guys were just snapping their fingers and singing doo-wops. All dogs are supposed to be on a leash in this neighborhood. Speaking of, why are you picking on him? Isn't he a literal monster? This would be like the last guy that you want to f*** with. If I was you, I'd be wanting to make friends with good old Beast Boy here, because one of these days, his pit bull brain's gonna swell up, and I don't want to be on his bad side when it does. The bullies find his list to Santa, and his list is asking for some real hardcore stuff. New spikes for an Iron Maiden? I think this kid needs to be on some sort of list. And I'm not talking about the naughty list, alright? I'm talking about a little bit more of a serious list. Later on, Eddie's parents ask him why he's so sad. It's Christmas time. He should be happy. You can't be sad around Christmas time. Eddie says he misses Transylvania and that Christmas in America just isn't the same. Well, Eddie, I got some news for you. If you don't like it, then you can get the hell out of here. Go back to your own damn country, boy, because this here's America. And in America, we love Christmas. After hearing this, the family comes together to do their part in making Eddie's Christmas unforgettable. Herman decides to get Eddie a new toy from the Fears and Roebuck holiday catalog, and son of a bitch if that didn't make me laugh, okay? I'm man enough to admit it. Marilyn is gonna invite family from the old country for a big Christmas party, Lily's gonna participate in a neighborhood decoration contest, and Grandpa's gonna cast a spell to make it snow in Southern California. But very quickly shenanigans ensue, cause Herman can't afford the new toy. So he asks his boss for a bonus, and his boss goes on a tirade about how people just don't die during the holiday season anymore, and he can't afford it. Drinking and driving! Oh, ho, ho. Marilyn's looking through the family photo album, and we get another pretty decent joke. By the way, who is this? Oh, that's your uncle, Raman Tha. He was in line to be a pharaoh, but they went to the party system, and he lost the vote. Don't invite him. He's into those pyramid schemes. I have to reiterate that we are 13 minutes into this movie and it has made me chuckle twice. That's two chuckles. That's two more chuckles than I was expecting through this whole entire thing. Eddie decides to feed his letter to Santa to Spot, the family's pet dragon. It's not important. But Spot just coughs it back up and it just lays on the floor till later. Because apparently no one sweeps in this house. I know you're monsters, but you guys don't have standards. Why don't you go out and get a Roomba? Maybe a spooky Roomba. Perhaps a Boomba? So the next day, Lily and Eddie sign up for the Christmas decoration contest, and they run into Edna, the winner for the past six years. And I'm getting some real racist vibes from her. Shake? Uh -huh, I'm not touching that. We watch as a man riding a motorcycle crashes while checking out Marilyn. And can we really blame him? <laughs> Put it there, fellas. You need to put those things away, girl. You're gonna cause another American tragedy, like... Holy shit, this movie came out before 9-11. What do you think the Munsters were doing on 9-11? She helps him recover and they get to talking and flirting, but suddenly she starts flipping out when he calls her pretty. Because apparently she's never been called pretty before. Because of Herman's boss denying his request for a bonus, he has to take up some second jobs. And we get a fun compilation of him posing nude for an art class, wrapping presents, and giving blood. And son of a bitch, I know it's stupid, but this whole thing made me laugh. It's like the perfect kind of stupid. They have to use a comically large needle to draw his blood, and then it comes out green. It's even got this stupid cheap slurping sound effect. Grandpa tries to make it snow, and he accidentally teleports Santa Claus and his two elves into his lab. And these elves have the most horrendous voice ever. They're like pitched up to the point of chirping in the speakers. Like, it's horrible. She thinks we're cute. I heard. Pinch me. Ow! Not so hard, you moron! It also doesn't help that they're just a couple of little perverts. I've just found religion. <laughs> She defies the laws of physics. It'll take me an hour to climb up that. But it'd be, be worth, worth the trip. trip. <laughs> Grandpa says he can teleport him back to the North Pole, but it's gonna take some time. Santa is distraught, but the elves are celebrating because for once they get Christmas off. A couple of fellow essential workers, huh? Put her there. Blue collar, am I right? Look at this flannel. Yeah, I'm a man. We get this stupid scene of these nuns singing and Herman scaring them away, and I'm sorry, I don't know how it keeps happening, but this movie keeps making me laugh. 
I feel like I'm being waterboarded with giggles, like god, this movie is the perfect kind of silly holiday fun. And the smiles don't stop there, cause Herman is absolutely elated to meet Santa, and he's so excited to find out that Santa knows his name. God damn it, I have not stopped grinning once during this film. While waiting for Grandpa to finish the spell, Santa sees Eddie's list and asks Eddie why he never mailed it. And Eddie says he never mailed it cause he just wants Christmas to be over. Why is this kid so sad? Can someone get him a Prozac or something? Maybe some air duster? Herman asks Santa to talk to Eddie and Santa talks about how many times he had to move as a young kid and make a new life and how hard it is. And we get this super sweet interaction that actually tugged on my heartstrings. And Greenland actually felt like home. Well, that's easy for you. I mean, you're Santa Claus. And you're Eddie Munster. And that's something pretty special if you ask me. Why am I enjoying this movie? I thought this would be stupid. I just wanted to point and laugh at how bad this movie is, but it's got me crying in the club right now, son. Now it's the day of the competition, and two of the judges are these pretentious art snobs who talk about how the Munster's house is a subtle social commentary on how Christmas is actually dark and depressing and blah, 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 blah. Shut the f*** up. Just say you like it because it's spooky, like a normal person would. So the motorcycle man from the beginning, who I completely forgot about, finds Marilyn's address on one of her letters and she responds way too positively to this information. You've met this guy once, he called you attractive, you ran away, and now he has stalked you to your residence. Why are you happy about that, Marilyn? Tom invites Marilyn, oh yeah, his name's Tom, I forgot to mention that. Tom invites Marilyn to a local biker bar where his band will be playing, and God, that's the worst. This is coming from someone who is involved in the local music scene for quite a long time. Support your local music artists. But I'm tired of being asked to go to your band's show. I'm sorry. I'm sure you're having fun. I'm sure you guys are super talented. I'm sure it'll be a blast. I would rather peel my toenails off with a can opener. I'm sorry. Grandpa says he'll have the spell ready in an hour, but the elves aren't ready to leave. So they devise a plan to never have to leave, and they turn Santa into a giant fruitcake. Yeah. A fruitcake. They have essentially killed Santa Claus by turning him into a lovely, edible dessert. I actually like fruitcake. I know a lot of people don't. I like fruitcake. I know. Go in the comments. Riot. Go down there and say, this f***ing fruit likes fruitcake. Please don't. My, my mental health is hanging on by a string. Okay, please. And as if that already isn't bad enough, Lily decides she's going to gift the fruitcake to Edna, who takes Santa home and tries to eat him with the judges. But as she goes to cut into him, he starts screaming and squirming and the judges leave saying, ah, oh, this, this bitch is a total whack job, all right? This bitch is crazy. It wasn't any of the subtle racism or anything. It's the fact that she's fighting with her fruitcake. Edna returns the cake to Lily because obviously it's f screaming and stuff. And they miraculously find out that it's Santa. Grandpa goes to make a cure but finds his lap destroyed, which leads to Lily trying to make the cure and it causes Santa to change into different Christmas related things like a turkey and a tree and a poodle. You know, the famous Christmas poodle. Everyone loves pine tree pootie. Eddie smells the lab and says it was the elves who destroyed it. And they find the poster to Tom's band, so they decide to go check the biker bar. And we get this great scene of Herman all dressed up in biker attire, and fuck me, this movie can't keep getting away with this. It can't keep making me laugh. Look at his stupid little hat and tell me that's not funny. They find the elves and try to convince him to help Santa, but they refuse, so the family just leaves. Cause you know, you couldn't just totally squish these little fuckers without even trying. But nah, they said no, so we gotta get out of here. Lily finally changes Santa back, but it's too late. It's Christmas Eve and Santa doesn't have enough time to make all the presents and pack the sleigh. Santa says that his secret all along has always been elven magic. So you're telling me that Santa has been enslaving this race of magical beings and has been forcing them to work year round nonstop with no breaks? Wow, maybe he really is American. But just on time, the elves come back to save the day, and they bring the bikers to help make the toys. And Santa's a little too happy to see them. Oh, you remember that whole turning me into a fruitcake thing? Yeah, me neither. Up top, Christmas is saved! Up top. <laughs> Down low. <laughs> oh, not that low. <laughs> Cause you're a little person. The elves and Grandpa create this Tim Burton machine that takes whatever Herman thinks about and turns it into a real thing. So I guess AI is taking over the North Pole too. It's a scary world we're living in. 
especially 1998. As Santa gets ready to depart, he gives Herman a uniform and asks him to be his helper tonight, which makes Herman super happy, and once again, there is a smile on my face. I was smiling at 3 o'clock in the morning while watching the fucking Christmas Munsters special. How is this possible? Everyone needs to go watch this. Scientists, they need to siphon this feeling and make it into a new antidepressant, all right? It'll, it'll, it'll go everywhere. It'll save everyone from killing themselves. Santa then uses the bikers as his reindeer and I'm gonna say it, I'm officially saying it, this might be the greatest Christmas special ever. I mean, look at this. They even have the reins in their mouths. They have the reins in their mouths. They make all the deliveries and Herman wakes up the next day with a present for Eddie. Then he walks in to see Lily dressed like a sexy satanic Mrs. Claus and I didn't think it was possible to get bricked up during a Munster's Christmas special, but here I am. So all of the family has arrived for the Christmas party and we get all these cool cameos and fun references and I think I even caught a Rosemary's Baby reference. Rosemary? Rosemary's here? Where? Oh, I don't know. But she left Junior over there. Uh <laughs> oh no, I'm not changing that. Also, apparently Tom is the dumbest bastard in the world because he still thinks that this is some sort of costume party. Come on, Tom, think with your head. Have you ever been to a costume party where there wasn't at least one white chick dressed as a sexy cat? And right as the judges are about to announce Edna as the winner of the decoration contest, Santa makes it snow over the Munster's house, giving them the victory. Eddie opens his present and it's just what he wanted. A torture playset with real stretch o -matic action. Eddie hugs his dad and f me, I did not think that this would be such an emotional journey. I, I didn't think that I would get so like tugged up in my heart by seeing Frankenstein smile because his wolf son is hugging him on Christmas morning. Like this gave me the full feeling of the Christmas spirit. It all came flooding back into me like, like some sort of flood. The film ends as the family enjoy their Christmas, and that's it. I gotta be honest with you, like I said in the beginning, I did not expect to enjoy this movie. I saw on an obscure Christmas special list, and I was planning on going, ha ha, look how stupid this movie is, ha ha, isn't it so bad, guys? But no, this was genuinely good. I mean, it had its low points, like this Edna character. Didn't need to be here at all, other than to be a racist antagonist. But what's a good Christmas movie without some not-so-subtle racism, am I right, guys? Also, the Santa they used wasn't the best Santa I've ever seen. Not the worst. I mean, it's Santa. You can't really f*** up Santa. But he just didn't feel genuine. I know that's such a stupid complaint, but I want my Santa to feel real, damn it. In a movie full of fictional characters and monsters, Santa Claus comes off as the fakest in the room, and that's a problem in my opinion. I think in a perfect world, you shave off 30 minutes of this movie, cut Edna and the fruitcake nonsense, have the elves betray Santa in a less stupid way, and you might just have the best monsters media since the original series. With all that being said, for a cheesy Christmas special, this was great. And if you're looking for a new holiday classic to add to your seasonal routine, then you should go check it out, because right now it's free on Tubi. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this silly little video, and I hope you stick around for the next one. And before I forget, happy holiday. I hope you guys have a good season. I know it's rough out there, but keep your chin up, because if you don't, then who will? Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go pay an OnlyFans model to dress up in that sexy satanic Mrs. Claus outfit.